everyone, and welcome to our monthly Small Ruminant webinar. My name is Sarah Jemanski. I'm your host here from Purdue Extension in Perry County. And today we have our we have two speakers who will be co-presenting on preparing goats for show. And so I'd like to welcome Alicia Rogers, who has experience preparing both dairy goats and meat goats for show, and Robbie Kelly, who has a lot of experience preparing meat goats for show. And so I will go ahead and turn it over to the two of you. All right, thank you, Sarah. Go ahead and screen share up and going. All right, so Robbie and I are excited to be with you all today. Um, we know around Indiana, there have been several goat shows that have already occurred, but there are a lot more to happen throughout this year between county fairs and open shows. <clears throat> So we just wanted to kind of share with you kind of what to expect when you're going to a goat show or preparing for a goat show today. So um, as Sarah said, I'm the uh, Ag and Natural Resource Educator up in DeKalb County with Purdue Extension. And Robbie is the 4-H slash Ag and Natural Resource Educator over in Elkhart County with Purdue Extension. So get this, there we go. All right. So we're going to kind of start off with just a conversation about what you can expect if you go goat showing. Um, so today we're going to discuss ways to prepare both dairy and meat goats before going to a show. So we're going to review clipping of both types of goats. Um, just do a brief overview of trimming hooves because we will have a session on that here in a couple of months on more um, in-depth hoof care. Um, if you are showing dairy goats, especially, um, how to care for those udders. We'll talk about kind of those pre-day preparations and then also what to expect at a goat show, especially if you're doing open shows. So I'll kick us off with talking about dairy goats and just going alphabetical order. So, um, so for goat show preparation, um, just a few things to consider before for really even signing up for the show. Um, about a month to at least two weeks before the show, um, try to train your goats to lead. Um, could be as simple as just walking back and forth in the barn a couple of times. Um, so as I've been working on tattooing my goats the last couple of weeks, which you wanna do about at least two to three weeks before shows, if not earlier, um, I make sure to walk them up and down the barn a couple of times. And usually by about that second time, they've got a pretty good idea of what leading should be like. Um, so from there, anytime they leave the pen, I will also, for the most part, lead them. Um, unless we're in a hurry and they're still small enough, I'll pick them up and walk. But <laughs> for the most part, we try to lead them as much as possible. Um, for clipping the animal, um, getting the hair off them, shorn down, things like that, anywhere from about a week to three days before the show. Um, so if you're fairly new to clipping goats, give yourself a little extra time in case there are a couple of mistakes that has a little bit of time to grow back in and blend in. Um, and especially if you have like black goats or really dark brown goats, um, the clip lines on those show up really well. Um, so you want to give those a couple of days to kind of blend back in. Um, trimming feet, anywhere from a week to two days before the show. Um, if you're fairly new to being able to trim your own feet, um, you want to give them a little bit of time in case you nick them a little bit or get a little bit of pink showing to where they might be tender. So you want to give them a few days to kind of recover from that so they walk to the best of their ability in the show ring. And do you have milking dairy animals? Um, you want to do the udder the day before or the morning of the show, just so that udder is nice and smooth, nice and clean, um, and isn't, isn't full of hair and fuzz and things like that. All right, so I've been showing goats for probably seven, going on seven years now. Um, and from when I started to where I am now, it's been a huge learning curve. Um, and that's what it, it just takes practice to get used to, tr to trimming your goats, clipping your goats. Um, the very first goat that I ever clipped um, was a white goat, and I took her down to, I think it was at least a 16th of an inch, if not shorter, and she got a massive sunburn. <laughs> so she looked wonderful going into the ring for the first time. Um, 
So, but for me, kind of my basic tools that I use every time I clip, um, I have my hoof trimmers there because when they go on the stand, I check their feet. If they need trimmed, I'll trim them. Um, we have the clippers that I use are the Andis XL five speed. And um, I've had those for four years now and they've been a wonderful tool for me. Um, yes, it takes a little bit longer because the blade's just a smaller blade. Um, I could get a bigger blade and cut down on my time. Um, but for me, that that set of clippers has just worked really well for me. Um, last year, I think I clipped probably 250 goats for shows throughout the summer. Um, and it's it never tried to quit on me. Um, and then just a small little hand brush. I've got my half inch hair guard there because so a little bit of hair this weekend. Um, and then the two blades that I primarily use are number 10, which leaves about 1 16th of an inch of hair when I use just that. And then the 50 blade, which leaves 1 50th of an inch of hair, which is what I use to help clip my udders. All right, so when I get my animal on the stand, the first thing I do is take a look at their hooves. Yep, and if you have questions, put them in the chat box like Robbie had said, so. Yep. So I'll start by trimming the hooves. Um, the still wasn't too bad, but since I've got a show in another week or so, uh, week or so, um, she just I just trimmed her up since she was up there. Um, you can see on the left hand side, her toe doesn't look too bad when she's standing on the stand, maybe a little bit long, but it's nice and flat like it should be. Um, and but when you pick it up, you can see where the edges of the toe uh, of the hoof are starting to curl under. So I just trimmed those back, trimmed them up a little bit. You can see she had a little bit of a couple of little pockets here and there kind of towards the inside of the sole. Um, so trim those up a little bit and put her foot back down. So you can see looking at the second photo on the right, how her toe is just a little bit shorter, but she's got that nice flat line um, indicating that she has, has a good foot position. All right, so this is the doe that I started with. This is Jingle. Um, she's a two-year-old first freshener. Um, she's a miscolored Toggenberg, <laughs> um, but she also has waddles. Um, some of our, especially some of our dairy goats will have waddles on them. So I wanted to shave her so you get an idea of what to do with those waddles. So. Yeah. All right, so when I clip, the first thing I like to do is start with my face. Um, just because at that point in time, my blade is still cool. Um, the animal isn't too agitated yet. So usually if they have ears, I'll start with the ears. Just because trying to get those clippers in the ear, get that hair cleaned out, isn't their most favorite thing. Um, so ears are usually the very first thing that I start with. Just kind of start at the top of the point and work my way in um, on all angles. Try to get as much of that hair out as possible. Um, and then I'll just start working over the head. Um, and then don't forget the eyelashes. Um, so just trying to get that face as clean and clean of, as clean of an appearance as possible. Um, so you can see on let me get my mouse here. So you can see on my clippers here. I've got the arrow pointing down. You can see it's got going at the same angle as what the hair against the angle that the hair is growing against. So I'm pushing against the hair as I'm clipping down. And that just gives me a nice, smooth, clear appearance as I'm clipping. And then again, on the muzzle, don't forget the whiskers. So on this um, image here, we can see that I've got kind of a half and half split. So the right side is where I've already trimmed her muzzle. The left side is where there are still whiskers. So again, just giving her face just that nice, clean appearance all the way down. Um, and then waddles. So if your animal does happen to have waddles, it's kind of a scary thing to clip um, just because you don't want to make that one wrong move and accidentally cut it off, which it would take quite a bit to cut one off. Um, but it's not too difficult to do. So what I usually do is just grab the base of my waddle, kind of pull it down a little bit so it's a little taut, and then just take my clippers and work up every side until it's all clean. Um, then I'll hold kind of more of the top of the waddle and clean around the, or clip around the base of it where I still have a little bit of hair. So you can see on the left, kind of where we started, it's kind of hairy and fuzzy. And then on the right, it's nice and clean and clipped. So they may be a little intimidating, but it's not 
I'm usually more intimidated by clipping the udder, especially on a first time mom, than I am by clip, clipping the, the waddles. So. so we can see here, um, I have her, her face done. Um, usually, like I said, this time around, I left was gonna leave about a half inch of hair on her body, um, just because it is a little cooler still. Um, so her face, I did go with just the 10 blade, which is a 16th of an inch of hair. And you can see the difference on the hair length still left. So I still have my neck at what her pre-clipped length is. And then her head has been shaved down. You can see the ears are still clean, um, but everything else are, are clipped down and clean. Um, but I've still got a bunch of hair on the neck. Um, and we'll show here after a little while how I like to blend that in together. Next thing I had to go to is my legs, um, especially like I said, if I'm going to use a guard and keep my body length hair a little bit longer, I like to have at least my lower part of my legs be nice and cleaned and trimmed just so it's got that nice streamlined appearance as the judge is looking at her. Um, it's not a lot of extra fluff, unlike the boar goat industry that likes the fluff. <laughs> um, so for me, I start just at the base of my toes and then just take my clippers and start working up the legs. Um, so a doe like this that has white on her legs, it's kind of a nice guide. Um, so for me, with just my number 10 blade, I'll clip everywhere that there's white on this doe's legs, um, all the way up the inside of the legs, just so as she's the judge is looking at her head on. It's a nice clean appearance on the inside. And then on the outside edge here, um, I'll clip up to just above her knee where that brown starts to blend in. So like I said, anywhere there's white that got clipped with a 10 blade. Back legs can be a little bit tricky um, because right above the knee region, it kind of usually dips in. Um, so for me, that's usually one of kind of the places where my animals might try to kick if I'm trying to trim that um, because you kind of have to go kind of dip in kind of on the top and the bottom side of it. Um, so for me, I'll do the 10 blade up above, kind of just above that region. But to kind of help myself, I'll put my hand on the inside of that leg and kind of push out. So I have a little bit of extra, I guess, flesh area and smooth area to clip that animal up instead of having to really kind of maneuver in and get that creviced area. Um, so for me, that's helped me get a much cleaner line, a much clearer look. And you can see on this one, um, where I've already clipped up, just kind of up to where that white and brown kind of start to meet right in here. And then what I'll do then is just kind of go up the right back of the leg all the way up the back. And that's my next slide. Yep. So you can see on the left photo here, I've clipped up, made a clip all the way up. Um, so you can see where it's a little bit longer on the inside and much longer on the outside of her. So I've already made one pass up. Um, so again, with this being a kind of a doe with a white back end on her, um, I'm gonna clip everything that's white again. Just, it's a nice, easy pattern. It's a nice, easy way to be able to blend in just because I know that white kind of helps highlight some of those areas I want to. So being able to highlight her back end, kind of the udder region and things like that. So clipping around the back end. So you can see on the left-hand side here, I've done my clip job all the way up. The right-hand side, I haven't done yet. It's still pretty fuzzy, but you can see the difference, especially around the udder region here. And she was milked out just before, about an hour before I did this. So she's not full, but. Um, so on the left-hand side, you can see how it's got kind of a little wet, better shape to the udder. Then the left-hand side, I still got some stray word fuzz going on um, that kind of detracts from the shape of the udder. So you want to kind of clean all that up, make sure you get around the tail and the vulva area as well. Um, and then the second photo, you can see both sides are nice and clipped. You can see where it gives that udder a much nicer appearance um, before we actually shave the udder itself. And then another thing to remember um, is to get, when you're trimming around the feet and the hooves is to get between the toes. Um, when you're doing showmanship, especially for youth, um, I've seen shows where it literally comes down to if there's a hair between the toes or not as to who wins that showmanship class. 
So make sure you get all the hair between the toes. Sometimes it might mean you have to pick that hoof up and kind of get in there a little bit, um, but it just gives them a much nicer, cleaner appearance. Um, also make sure that you clean those hooves, especially for showmanship animals. You can see here where her hooves are not clean. They're still caked with manure and things like that. Um, so we just wanna give this animal as clean of an appearance as possible. So make sure those hooves are cleaned as well. All right, so here you can't see a huge difference, but we have her face and her legs done. Um, and so those are all clipped up and now it's time to move on to her body itself. So at this point, um, I'm still gonna have my 10 blade, but I'm going to add my half inch guard onto it. Um, this just gives me a little bit longer length of hair, um, still provides that nice clean clip that the 10 blade provides but it gives me that little bit extra hair. Um, so like I said, right now with it still being a bit cool out, the morning that I did this, I think it was like 50 degrees when I started clipping her. Um, we wanna make sure that we give those animals just a little bit of hair if we need to, or as we go into the fall, if we're still doing open shows in August or late August, early September, we wanna start making sure that hair grows out so they have good coverage going into the winter months. So on my guards, I have everywhere from a quarter of an inch up to one and a quarter inch. And so with mine, it's just a little magnetic clip on. Um, and so it literally just goes over the top of the blade and then just magnets on kind of on the bottom side. Very easy to take on and take off if need be. <clears throat> All right, so clipping my body. Oh, give me a second and my internet was unstable. So we'll go without the video for a minute. So, all right, so clipping the body. Um, usually I start with my back legs first, um, just so that way um, I can just kind of start at the back end and move my way forward since that's the direction that I'm going in and the direction that um, the hair grows or the against which the hair grows. So you can see here, just start the lower leg, work my way up, and then start the tail head and work my way forward. Sometimes when you're clipping the body, especially around the barrel region, you'll get kind of some wrinkles in there, especially if you have a very dairy animal um, that has kind of some nice dairy, um, kind of wrinkly skin to them. Um, so sometimes that clipping can be a little difficult because they'll leave little ridges of hair and things like that along the way. So what you can do, um, you can see in the top photo here where there is kind of a wrinkle in her shoulder region, um, kind of a couple of wrinkles where the hair didn't cut right. So what I do is go ahead and put my hand kind of an inch or so forward of where that wrinkle is and then just push kind of yeah, push the skin kind of away from my clipper. That way it straightens that hair and that wrinkle out and I can go through and get a nice smooth shave. Also when I'm clipping, I wanna make sure that blade is basically flat against the body and not digging in or kind of digging up because that will leave me with weird hair lengths. So just keep it kind of flat against the body. Even if you apply just a little bit of pressure, and that will give you a nice smooth look and smooth shave. Maybe. All right, so now that we've got the body clipped, um, we've got, obviously we had our short one and a 16th inch length from the blade, but then we have our half inch of hair left on the body. So it leaves a weird line. Um, and so this is where we'll go in and do some blending to help smooth in that look. Um, blending kind of, this is where you wanna do it maybe a few days ahead of the show. So there's some time to, to um, yep, let that hair blend in a little bit better as well. But you can see on the left-hand side here where I started with, you can see those lines that delineate between the body shave and the back end shave. Um, you can see definitely see that line. So what I do to blend is I'll flip my clippers over. Um, so that way the part that I'm usually holding on to is reversed. And I'll just take my clippers and just drag them down the body. 
Um, so kind of blend that line in. You can see where we get some of that fuzz off. And just by doing that, it really helps blend in that hair. Um, you can see on the top end, there is sometimes when you blend the first time you go to kind of set your clipper down, you can create a line. And that's where I accidentally did here up on her kind of her rump area. So that's why I do it a few days ahead of time to let it go ahead and blend back in, kind of get rid of some of those lines. But it's pretty easy to do. Um, again, if you remember on the neck when we started, we had a whole lot of fuzz left on the neck. Um, you can see there the long lines and everything. But by blending it in, by taking those clippers, basically turning them over and dragging them down, you can see how that blended in that neckline nicely. All right, so we had our main body done. Usually I'll do the body or the belly last just because I don't want to have to bend over that long. Um, again, this is one where I'm going to take my clippers and just kind of instead of going forward with the clipper, I'm going to do like I did with the blending and just start at the very front. So usually I'll have to hold the front leg up and then drag those clippers backwards to get that nice smooth underbelly. The thing you wanna be cautious of, again, when you are clipping dairy doughs is those milk veins underneath, those lines that kind of create that milk and such. And you can see here, hers aren't, hers are there. They're not as developed as some of the ones we have, but you wanna be careful just not to push too hard into those um, and accidentally clip them. Um, it takes quite a bit, but it has happened in the past. So you just wanna be cautious working around that milk vein region of the belly. All right, and then probably my favorite part to do on the goats is my tail. Um, so for me, the tail is just kind of the, the final section, um, just kind of finishes that animal off, finishes that look off. You can obviously do this whenever you want to. It's just one of my fun parts to do. So you start with really the fuzz um, going on um, both sides. So we can see that here on the top left photo, we've got still a fuzzy tail. We've got a kind of fuzzy end to it. So I'll just take my clippers with my guard on, no, without my guard on and clip the very sides of my tail first to clean up that fuzz along the side. Um, second photo, there's still a little bit of fuzz up towards the top, um, kind of detracts from it a little bit. So I'll just take my clippers, clip that off. Um, and then from there, I find where the point of that tail head or that tail is, that end of that tail. So kind of indicated by that red dot. And so for me, I'll kind of put the first knuckle of my thumb where that dot is. And then the end of her tail, I'll go up to where basically the top of my thumb is. And that's where I'll go ahead and buzz it off. You can see there in the top right photo where it's buzzed off. So it just gives it a nice clean look. And then I'll put my guard back on and go through and just clip the top of the tail off as well. Um, so you wanna leave some, probably about an inch and a half or so of hair on the end of the tail, um, about an inch from the end um, of the knob and then about a half inch below the knob, kind of back towards the body, just to give it a nice full look. Um, now this doe, when I went to go clip her, um, she moved at just the wrong time. So half the end of that tail got cut off. <laughs> it happens. Um, you can still show the animal, it's perfectly fine. It'll just take her a while to grow back in. It'll look, just look a little funny for a few days, but. All right, so I've got all of my body and things like that clipped. And so now I'm moving on to the udder. Um, so this is where I'm gonna change over to that 50 blade. Again, this leaves me with 1 50th of an inch of hair left. So you wanna be cautious when using a blade this fine because it can leave red marks on the udder. Um, so for me, I'll clip with this and then usually the morning of the show or as soon as I get done clipping this, cause usually I'll try to clip the afternoon before the show. Um, I'll switch over to a disposable razor and a little bit of, little bit of shaving cream um, and utilize that and just get her udder fully um, smooth, so. So you can see here, um, we started kind of from the front of the udder and moved our way backwards. 
in with the 50 blade. And then when you're looking at the teats, you want to kind of hold onto the bottom of the teat and move your way up each of the teats as you're shaping. You can see in the right photo here, um, where I accidentally got a little bit of close with that 50 blade kind of up towards the top um, where it connects to the body. And it did leave a few of those red marks. Um, I try to be as cautious as possible, but this is where you kind of do need to be careful when using that 50 blade. And then really from the backside is where you can really see that difference in what that blade can do. So usually from the top of the udder, you'll have to trim down. And then from kind of the medial or the middle of the udder, you'll have to maybe trim out or trim in depending on which way that hair grows. So you wanna get everything clipped up, all that hair off that you can. Um, you wanna be cautious as you're trimming the top of the udder here, kind of like I got over here on the right-hand side, a little bit of a weird jagged from the 50 blade. Um, I got a little carried away with trimming away some of that upper hair. Um, but that's why I did it now <laughs> instead of the night before, just for a demonstration. Um, so that hopefully will help to grow in before her first show next weekend. But you can really see the difference between the hair on the udder versus a pretty much clean shaven udder. Um, and so then from here, this is where I would just shave it down from there with a disposable razor. Sorry, can you hear me now, Robbie? <laughs> All right, so this is where we started. So again, very hairy dough, kind of a half yak. And then this is where we've concluded. So you can see a much nicer looking animal, one that is ready to show um, that I'd be, I'd be more than happy to take into the show ring. So, and then once I'm done with that animal, um, I make sure to, Oh, there I am. <laughs> How much did you guys miss? <laughs> Not much. You're good. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. So once I'm done clipping that animal, um, that's when I go ahead and clean my clippers. Usually I'll take the brush between each animal um, and take kind of this front cover off. Um, and so that way I can get the hair underneath here. Um, and I'll go ahead and take the blade off as well and just clean in there just to get all that hair out to help the motor continue to run well. I'll then put the blade back on and that's when I'll use the, the kind of the lube, the cooling gel uh, or the cooling spray to kind of spray it down, set my clippers down, take care of that animal and then go get my next animal, trim their feet. And by the time I do that, my blade has usually cooled down to the point where I can start clipping the face on this animal on the next animal. Um, if your blade does get too hot, you may need to switch it out with a similar size blade. Um, so that's why it helps to have at least two of each blade in case you drop one and it um, gets a chip in it or a couple of teeth out. That way you aren't scrambling to try to get a new blade before you have to show or while you're preparing to show, so. Too far. All right, I'll hand it over to Robbie. Well, thanks, Alicia. I even learned a little more about grooming uh, dairy goats. Uh, I have several years experience showing boar goats and been doing it for 20 plus years. Um, uh, one thing I will caveat is everyone has a little bit different technique on how they like to groom animals. And um, so this is kind of an idea for you to get started at least uh, when showing uh, meat goats. Um, we tend to like a lot more hair than what our dairy goat friends like to have. So I'll have Alicia go to the next slide unless I have, perfect. So kind of the same thing that Alicia talked about earlier, um, you know, you really wanna start preparing about a month before your show. Um, and that's really the training part when you're working with your animals, uh, getting them used to clipping, washing, as well as um, bleeding. Uh, clipping, uh, if you've never clipped before, uh, it takes practice and time. Uh, so you should, I like to um, try to get our does clipped uh, about a week before the show uh, to three days because sometimes you'll have lines and things. And um, it also allows for some hair growth back if 
I call it clipper lice if you accidentally take too much hair off. Um, bathing, uh, many people have a hair care routine that they do, especially now um, on the boar goat side of things is, uh, I call it influenced by our beef cattle people uh, with growing hair on bodies as well as legs. Uh, they have a daily routine. Um, you know, that could include weekly bathing or rinsing. Uh, however, I would recommend at least washing the goat a couple of times prior to the show. Uh, especially if you have a white animal. Uh, sometimes those stains are hard to get out or uh, you just need some time. Hoof trimming, uh, definitely do that about a week out. Don't trim their hooves a day or two before the show because that's what's going to happen is you're going to end up nicking a hoof and it's going to be, oh crud, the goat's not going to walk right. Um, so that's why you should always try to do that as well. And if you have registered Okay, ready to move to the next one. Sorry, I uh, backed out on that. So tools to use when we talk about breeding stock, um, you know, make sure to have a good set of clippers. Uh, there's lots of kinds out there, whether that is going to be, um, you know, I have a pair of quarter clippers that I use, use there. It's a, a pair of Andy's Ultra Edge. I've had them for ever. Um, I recommend a, a, ten, a number 10 blade as well as a blending or blocking blade. Uh, if you're newer, be sure to use a blending blade. Uh, blocking blades are a little less forgiving and take a little more hair. Uh, a good set of detachable guards. Uh, so uh, I have everything from a number one to a number 10. Um, and so I'll use those guards interchangeably. Uh, so from a fourth of an inch to an inch and a half, uh, it all depends upon the hair that is on that goat. And so there's lots of really good clippers out there too. Uh, if I'm shaving a weather, uh, I typically re recommend a bigger set of clippers like Oster um, with, a, with a different blade on it. Uh, that typically is my go-to. So some other items to have on hand. Um, no, I'm not promoting Sullivan's, but that happens to be the products that I use a lot of. Um, so that's my disclaimer, not promoting them, but uh, I do use a lot of their products. So having a good blower. Uh, especially, um, you know, to keep those animals dry. Uh, there's all kinds of blowers out there on the market that you can use. A good trim stand, uh, shampoo, depending on your, um, your needs there. So I typically use a stain buster and a bright light, especially if you're washing a white colored goat. Um, and then sometimes if you have a daily hair care um, that you're rinsing a couple times a week, uh, something that's gonna put some oils back into their skin. Cause obviously if you overwash them, you can dry out their skin, which isn't good either. A couple other things I have on there. Uh, you'll see in the bottom right-hand corner, just a little scrub brush that I use, especially if you have goats that are stained. Uh, and then I have this cool little squeegee brush that I use too. Uh, it helps get that excess water off of it and makes it easier to blow dry and cuts down that blow drying time pretty quickly. Uh, one other thing I didn't note on the other slide uh, is if you're showing bucks, boar bucks tend to be a pretty messy and dirty. Um, uh, Dawn dishwashing liquid works wonders to cut through that grease and that grime, uh, especially if it's around breeding season, you're showing bucks. Uh, I highly recommend washing legs and the chest with that area, uh, really helps get all that stuff out of there. Um, so that's another tip for you. So other supplies I have on hand, uh, this is kind of uh, I actually pulled out where I'm going to a show in a couple of weeks, so I pulled out all the stuff in my show box. Um, so com combs you can use, personal preference. Uh, I tend to use what we call a fluffer comb uh, that helps really pull that hair and gives it some more volume. Uh, if you're into building legs uh, on goats, uh, I'm not going to kind of go over that process today because it's more of a fitting thing, uh, and there are people that are way better at it than I am on that. Um, but they have a roto fluffer, uh, which can help you build legs. You can attach it to the end of a, a drill. 
um, and help you build that leg hair. And they also have the mini 360 combs, uh, which is a comb there you see goes all the way around and it's a spiral. That really helps you build that hair volume up. Uh, hair conditioning supplies that are there, uh, whether you need adhesives, um, you know, sprays to uh, give your hair some volume there, kind of like the flare. Uh, powderful, something I use to help build legs uh, on our goats. Uh, and then the re Revive that is there uh, is kind of my skin conditioning. Uh, so again, we're keeping those natural oils. And then of course, if you're using any adhesives or kinds of things, it's always good to have a he adhesive remover uh, that you wanna put on the animal to help break down those oils and things that you use to build hair. Uh, you should rinse those off after, after the show. Uh, always uh, have an extension cord, no matter what, even if you're going somewhere um, I always pack an extension cord because electric can sometimes be um, scarce and you aren't always pinned next to an electrical outlet. And of course, a good hose and nozzle. Um, I put that one on there as I was looking for my nozzle the other day in the barn uh, before I was trimming our goats and end up having to buy another one. Um, but always have a good hose and nozzle with you as well. <laughs> so again, everyone is a little different and every goat is different. Uh, on how you want to groom your animal. Most of it's going to be the same, uh, but you want to study the weaknesses and the strengths of your animal uh, to kind of know uh, your animal personally. Every animal I groom is slightly different. Um, you know, whether you have a uh, goat that might be a little weak on their pasterns or some other things, there's some parts you may not want to clip as much or take some uh, as much hair off of. Again, weathers and market animals are clipped different than breeding stock. Uh, pay attention to your show rules for that. Uh, most of the time they're called what we call slick sheared and I'll briefly go over that uh, today. Um, but our breeding stock uh, should be trimmed um, to where they have some hair and things. I'll, I'll kind of talk about some of those guidelines. Um, make sure you know your show grooming rules. Um, if you're going to an open show, those kinds of things, 99% of the time there's not rules. Um, you know, 4-H rules, sometimes counties have, and it varies by county. Um, so just knowing what those grooming rules are, are important before you get there. Uh, one of the things I always uh, really do is because uh, I go through a lot of blades, uh, is, is be sure you wash your animal completely and have them completely dry before you clip the animal. Uh, that really kind of helps define what hair is there. Um, and it'll save you on getting your blade sharpened as often. So uh, just some key tips on that. So this year, and I realized my goat did not want to completely cooperate with me. Um, so obviously she does not look the best if you're taking pictures to, you know, put her in a show or sale. Um, but this is just kind of a good way to give you some rough practice here on some ideas you should look like. Uh, so this doe, I took out, took her out of the pasture, uh, to clip her, um, but the goal is ultimately to make the animal look the best it can. Um, hair can do a lot of things for you on the way you clip it, uh, on the boar goat side, just because we have some hair we can work with. So this is our before picture um, on the left-hand side. Uh, so the first thing that I do when I clip my goats is I always start towards the front. Um, as you see here, Alicia's got the pointer. Uh, but if you look at her chest on that left-hand side, you see some of that fuzzy hair hanging down. Um, what I'm going to do is I want to clip out that chest. Uh, some people prefer to use guards when we do this. Uh, I personally just take my blending or blocking blade, put it on my set of clippers. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of flatten that out a little bit. It makes her chest floor look a little deeper. I don't have any of those scraggly hairs, those kinds of things. One of the other things I'm going to do on her legs, uh, if you look at the top part of her legs, uh, it's, I know, a little harder. Yep, we're pointing there. Um, if you look on the right-hand photo, what I'm going to do is I'm going to carve out a little bit of that hair. What that does is it helps the animal look bigger chested and wider from the front. So the ultimate goal is to make that animal look a little bigger. One of the things I also do is on that front part of the forearm um, is I will take, um, and I do this with a blending blade. Uh, some people will put a quarter inch guard on there and do it. Um, is I'm going to take a little bit of hair uh, from this top part off as well, because it's going to make that forearm pop out, uh, make it a little, a little more muscular. Uh, so the whole point is, is we're trying to uh, show off uh, the muscles that this animal has 
as well as how deep and wide in that chest floor that animal has. So one of the things I do here, and it's a little fuzzy, um, but I start by finding the, so after I've done the chest floor, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take out that uh, blending or blocking blade. I'm gonna put the number 10 uh, blade on, and then I'm going to use either depending on the dough. Uh, so if I have a dough that's a little shorter necked, I'm gonna take some more hair off. If I have a dough that's pretty act or um, pretty moderate um, or has plenty of length in her neck, I'm not gonna take as much hair off. Um, so I'm gonna use a number two or a number three, uh, so about a fourth of an inch. I'm gonna find where that point of elbow is. Uh, so if you kind of you know put your hand there, you kind of can kind of see where my where I've started to go up. I'm gonna make two lines. So I'm gonna start uh, for me because I'm right-handed. That's just natural for me. I'm gonna start on the right-hand side. I'm gonna make a line that goes up. And then so if you look on the side view of this dough, uh, you can kind of see where I've made that line. Uh, some people tend to go down a little further on the neck. I choose not to. Um, and if you have a dough that might be a little weak in her shoulder assembly, uh, I highly go, highly suggest going up towards the head a little more, kind of like I've did on this one. Um, because again, we also want to hide a few faults in these animals as you're trimming. Uh, I'm going to do the same thing on the left-hand side of that dough, uh, make that line again, uh, so where it meets at the top of that neck. Um, so that's kind of the first thing that I do. Uh, that's just kind of my guide to do that. So I know what to trim out, and I'll show you that on the next slide. So here, here's three different shots of that same doe's chest. Uh, so what I've done is I've made both those lines uh, on either side. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to shave that whole chest out uh, all the way up to that goat's jawline. Um, so sometimes you have to take the goat off the headstand there uh, to do this. So it makes it a little complicated. And then uh, even at the top there on the, and I don't have a picture of this one, but I'm gonna do that kind of if we flip back to that other slide. Uh, if you look at that goat's horn set, uh, you're gonna do this at the very top of the head as well. So kind of right there, uh, you're gonna bring those two lines together and shape all the way up to that neckline and all the way to the horns, just so it's nice and even uh, and it appears to be the same. So as we go through here, the next thing you kind of got the, the front clipped up, that center picture really shows you where we're at. Uh, as you can see, she looks a little wider than our first picture. Uh, we've cleaned up that hair. The next thing that we're going to look at is if you look at that very last photo, after you've done this, you start to have some clipper lines. Um, and so this is where our blending is going to come in uh, to kind of blend that hair coat into the back of that animal. So what I do, and people have totally different preferences on this, uh, if you've been clipping for a while, you could be really good at this, and all you need to do is just use a blending or blocking blade to do it. Um, I kind of like to use the foolproof method, even though I've shaved hundreds of these animals. Um, so, so if I started with a number two or number three to completely shave her chest, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the next attachment on, the next size bigger, uh, and I'm going to go about half that length. Uh, so there you can kind of see in that right-hand picture, got the chest there. Um, sorry, the left-hand picture. Uh, I've got the picture there. I've kind of, you can kind of see the different hair length. I'm gonna take that next guard size down, or sorry, next guard size up. I'm gonna take one swath on either side. And so what that's gonna do is that's going to shave that hair down a little bit. And then I'm gonna go back one more time after that swath and go up another guard size. And so what that does is it makes the blending process for you a little easier. So you can kind of see in that right-hand photo, there. Uh, I've done that, so it's a pretty even deal. Uh, I'll still take over that blending blade, uh, and you want to work your way down uh, and go gently press it on the animal. You don't want to kind of dig into that animal because you're going to lose more hair and take more hair off than blending it. Uh, so you got to be really careful when using a blending or blocking blade to do this. Recommend a blending blade. It's a little more forgiving. You don't take as much hair off. This is where the patience comes in and working and trimming these animals uh, is because blending takes a little bit. Uh, it's always good to take a couple steps back from that animal once you're blending to kind of look at the overall picture instead of right on top of it. 
Um, because remember, the judge isn't going to always be right on top of that animal. They're going to be back a little bit. They may approach that animal, um, but you want to make sure you have the full appearance as you're grooming them. So the next thing that I do, I'm going to go back one more slide, I think, where we already advanced. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is the side of the animal. Okay, next one. Sorry, Alicia. Um, so the next thing I'm going to do is work on the side of the animal once I've got that chest done. Uh, so I'm going to work on the underline and belly of this animal. Uh, so here you can kind of see uh, she's got some scraggly hairs going on. Uh, the ultimate goal is to kind of clean these lines up. Uh, the second picture there on the right hand side, I've actually already done uh, the other side there. And you can kind of already see that, that I've cleaned up that hair. What I'm going to do with that is I'm going to use, uh, and because I'm comfortable enough, uh, some people will use guards. I freehand it personally and use a blending or blocking blade. Uh, typically when I do this with a doe that's been shown uh, quite a bit uh, and is really good on the stand, I'll use a blending blade. If it's a doe that's a little, uh, doesn't like always like to be groomed, definitely use the blending blade. I personally use the blocking to do this. So uh, the things I'm going to do, I'm going to clean up that underline there, kind of shave some of that hair off. I stop at that midpoint. Uh, and only take a little hair off of that. And the reason I do that is you want does to have a nice feminine wedge. Uh, and so you just want to clean up some of that hair, but you don't want to take a bunch of it off because it makes the doe appear a little deeper in that area, uh, makes them a little more smoother in their lines. Now, one of the other things that I do uh, is if you look in the flank area of that animal, she's got some hair sticking out. Um, what I'll do is I'll take, uh, some people will use a guard. Again, I kind of freehand it with a blending blade and I'm gonna trim a little bit of that hair off. So when you set that doe up, those scraggly hairs, if you take those off again, makes her appear wider, deeper. Uh, that's what our ultimate goal with that is. So you can see here on this doe, I, that's what I've done. Uh, not the best angle. You can still see a few scraggly hairs, but if you step back from this animal, you'll see a nice smooth line in where Alicia's got the pointer going. That's where I'm taking that hair off. Um, you know, the goal is to make them look <laughs> that they go deeper in their body, um, that, um, you know, they're clean in their lines and appearance is really what you want to go for and the look that you're doing uh, when clipping your breeding stocks. So you're going to do this with both a doe and a buck. Uh, I should have prefaced that most of the time we're trimming them pretty much the same. Uh, weathers, again, are a little different. We'll go over that at the very end. So the next thing I do is I kind of work my way back. Um, and so <laughs> I kind of do a 360 around the animal. Uh, I do one side, I do the back, then I do the other side. Uh, so tails and the rear end is what I'm going to work on next. Uh, so this here um, is the picture of the doe before uh, I've trimmed her tail up. Um, on the left hand side, and I'm using my blending uh, or blocking blade to do this. Um, some people use uh, a guard or just uh, just the number 10. Either one is fine. It just depends on what you're most comfortable with. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of flatten out her rear just a little bit. I'm going to take the excess hair off the off the tail there. As you can see, she's got some puffs of hair. Um, down here towards um, down towards her rear. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that off a little bit. What that's going to do is going to give her some more defined mus uh, muscularity. Um, and it's going to make her, again, widen out from the back end a little bit when you view that animal. The other thing I do is right underneath her twist um, and right above the hawks. Um, so if you look on the right hand photo, yep, kind of where she's showing there, uh, I'm actually going to take my blending blade on the inside and I'm going to clip just a little bit of hair off of those legs. Uh, and the reason I do that, uh, again, it's that wider appearance of the animal. Uh, it gets rid of those loose hairs. Uh, it really shows what the animal has. All right. So the next one, uh, some other things I do. Um, and I had to go get this photo last night because uh, I forgot that I did not put this in the slideshow. So that's why there's 10 other goats in this picture, uh, but that's okay. Uh, so if you kind of look at the tail, what I've done here is I've cleaned up all those loose hairs and I've flattened out the top of her tail. Um, now, sometimes they have a lot of extra hair and so it helps them appear a little fresher and a little cleaner. 
One of the other things that we also do with boar goats, um, and this is a different doe because this one, the one that I originally had did not want to stay still. Uh, it was the first time she's been clipped this year. So uh, had, again, had to retrain her to the stand. Um, we clean up those hooves too. And you can kind of see in this picture uh, what we're going to do, because there is going to be hair on these legs, um, is I'm going to flatten out kind of where the base of the hoof is, that top base. Uh, and I'm just going to take my clippers and I'm going to take everything from it down. Uh, so we make those clean lines within that animal there. Uh, that's one of the really big keys that kind of dresses them up a little bit, makes them look a little more cleaner and fresher appearing. And I do that with either a number 10, uh, just a number 10 blade, no guard. Uh, some people use a blending or blocking. Um, any of those blades will work fine. I just like the number 10. It takes more hair off at one time. Uh, one of the other things I do as well, uh, and I realize this is not the world's greatest picture, um, is I look at the top line of the animal. Um, and so <laughs> as we look at that top line, what we want to do, um, and you need to look at the hair length on your animal. Um, so this girl just lost pretty much all of her winter hair. Uh, she's probably down to about an inch and quarter of hair on her, on her whole entire body. You don't want animals much hairier than that, especially on the Borgo end. What I'm going to do is I'm going to evaluate her top line. Uh, so I'm going to look at her. Um, one of the things that I do is I take, um, I'll get my guards out, see how much hair length is there. Um, I'll start with my inch, my inch guard, uh, see how long that hair is on that back if it's going to take a little bit off. Um, so typically about an inch is where I like it. I'm going to run up the center of her spine. Uh, so I'm going to put have that number 10 number 10 blade on my clippers, put that one inch guard on there, take a take that one inch, run it across her top line and stop right before I get to the shoulders. Uh, so kind of where she breaks in her collar pattern a little bit. That's where I want to stop. And the reason I do that is because even if you accidentally take some hair off there, you can make that animal appear a little loose shouldered. Uh, and we don't want to give that impression, especially if they're not. Uh, so I'm going to take that hair off the center. I'm going to go on either side one, one, uh, one blade length. So on either side. So I'm going to make three passes on her top line um, on either side. And I'm going to start right there at the uh, hook bones, sorry, the pin bones. So up. Uh, so, and I'm going to run it all the way across. What that's going to do is it's going to take some hair off of that. It's going to make her look a little wider on her top and take off some of that hair. And I also tend to do that a little bit. Um, and, you know, it helps it blend it in. Um, and sometimes you also need to go down or sorry, up another guard. So like if you have an inch and a quarter, uh, run that on the sides a little bit. So that on the sides of the animal, it blends in really nicely. Um, and it doesn't look like you've done a little bit of a chop job. Thankfully, uh, her hair is about the length that I want it. Uh, it was really easy for this animal to groom. So again, we're just trying to make that animal appear uh, as she would be. Uh, so these are some finished photos. Uh, I realize this poor girl looks a little steep rumped in this picture. I promise you she's not. It's just the way she's standing. Um, so what I've done here uh, is if we think back about those photos before, um, you know, we've got her nice and fresh appearing on those sidelines there. Um, you know, we've got her forearm popped a little bit because I took that blending blade uh, and chopped that down just a little bit. And I've actually done the same on her rear. So if you look above her hawk, um, I need to blend that in a little more, but I'll take and trim just a little bit of hair off of that. Uh, so what that does is it makes that rear muscle uh, pop out just a little bit uh, and gives her some fresher appearing and more youthful look. Uh, as, you can, as you look there on that chest and we compare to that first photo, she's nice and clean in her lines. Uh, she looks a little more elegant. Her head's a little more extended. Um, and again, it also depends on your doe that you have on what size guard you want to use. If I have a goat that's a little shorter necked, I have a few of those. Um, I'll go down another guard size or two to make them appear uh, just a little bit longer. Uh, if I have a doe like this one, she's pretty adequate in her um, balance and scale. Uh, I'm going to start with that number two to three. Um, so again, it's all about when we groom these animals, it's all about making them appear a little wider, which they really are. You're just getting rid of some of that hair uh, so we can really see what's there um, and really highlighting what good parts of the animal are there. 
So one of the things once we're done uh, with that dough, this is another uh, finalized picture. As you can see, I've kind of gotten rid of those lines that we had before as we are blending them in. Um, so we've got all of our, our animal trimmed. We did this about a week before. Um, and I highly encourage you, if you have some does at home and you're not and you're a 4-H person and you're not going to a show for another month, go ahead and start practicing trimming that animal um, just because the animal needs to get used to it. Uh, if this is your first time trimming, it takes practice um, to do this. Uh, and you're, you're not just gonna do it one time and get it right away. Uh, if you do, that is phenomenal and great but it does take time. Again, know your animal. Uh, sometimes you need to use different guards depending on the length of your animal, uh, his neck, especially in that area. <clears throat> as well as if you might see that you have a goat that's a little loose, loose shouldered uh, on where to put those angles at when you're, um, when you're trimming. Uh, take your time and don't rush it, especially when you're using a blending or blocking blade. Um, it's really important that you spend the most time doing that um, you know, and one of the nice things I like to say is a bad clip job makes the animal look bad, but the good news is you're only a couple of week, couple of weeks away from a good one. Um, these animals can grow hair pretty quickly. Um, and so that's why we say that week time frame before the show, you don't really want to do it before, uh, before that, because that hair's growth is going to come back. But the nice thing is if you mess something up, you only have about a week or two uh, for that hair to grow back that you can go through and fix some of those mistakes. So uh, just some words of wisdom there for you. So one of the other things I do want you to kind of think about um, that I didn't show on this, once you've got them clipped and everything, the day of the show, if you really, if you're into uh, fitting legs and building hair, um, you know, it's started to become more popular in the last few years. Uh, this is not always required and it does take time to do it correctly. Um, you know, if you're into that, uh, I kind of supplies I recommended earlier using that roto fluffer, get comfortable with using powderful or uh, another hair building product as well as some adhesive. Uh, when it's done well, it looks well. When it's done bad, it looks very fake. Uh, we've all seen it. Uh, there are many different videos out there on how to do this. And there's some really great people uh, that can show you how to do this, but it does take time and practice. And that's something you do day of. Uh, sometimes it does require a little bit of clipping of hair too, if you've got some off pieces, those kinds of things. Uh, as you're also going to a show, it's always a good idea to wash your goat the morning of or the day before, um, especially if you have a, what I would call a traditional Bordeaux uh, that's got mostly white colored, make sure to use some kind of purple or stain buster shampoo to get those uh, spots out of them. Um, inspect for final touch-ups. I'm always looking at that goat for final touch-ups. Uh, if I need to take a little more hair off of here or there, uh, those th kinds of things. Um, also, one of the other things to be aware of too, some people use show sheens or those kinds of things to uh, brighten their animal up, give them a little more hair volume, those sorts of deals. Um, you know, feel free to look into that, but practice before you go to the show too on how the animal reacts with their hair on that. All right. So. We are now the day before the show. Alicia, what do we need to know? It's okay. Take a breath. <laughs> so, um, so the day before the show can be pretty hectic. If it's as hectic as you want to make it. So these are kind of a few things to consider. Last minute prep, what to pack, things like that. So like we both talked about, um, making sure you wash your animal. Um, for me, I always, as, if they're filthy, um, obviously they get washed the day before. So on the dairy dose, especially once I have them body clipped down, just using that number 10 blade as it's war as it's warmer in the summer, um, usually I can just kind of spot wash them because at that point they're pretty clean. Um, they're pretty shiny. So they might not need as much washing and care. Again, on the dairy dose, if you're um, showing milkers, making sure you clip the udders. Um, usually I try to do that when the udders are full because it makes it easier to um, clip them versus when they're empty, you have a lot of loose extra um, skin to deal with. So I usually try to do this when they're full before I milk them out in the evening. Um, again, with milking dairy does, give them about 12 to 16 hours for refill before you would expect to go in the ring. So if your show starts at, let's say 9 a.m., um, but you're one of the last breeds to show, you might not be milking out until 9 or 10 p.m. in the evening. 
Um, just because you don't want those dairy doughs to be overly filled and squirting milk everywhere. Um, at that point, it becomes a biosecurity hazard. Um, and then just feed and water your animals as normal. And then one thing that we both forgot about that I remembered last night as I was milking was don't forget to clean the tail area. <laughs> um, this is one of the does that was on the stand last night that made me think of it. And I was like, yeah, she needs cleaned up. Um, so just take baby wipes or something like that and get all those creases, all that crap and stuff like that out of there um, and just get them cleaned up. You can also just take a little bit of Vaseline and kind of wipe in there and that helps keep some of the crud out um, for the future. And then a packing list. So these are just some of the things that Robbie and I kind of thought about as we are usually packing our, our stuff the night before, or maybe even a week before for some of these things. Making sure you have the correct registration papers for those animals that you are showing. If you are crossing state lines, make sure you work with your veterinarian 10 days to 12 days before the show to get certificate of veterinary inspection papers because most shows will not let you off the trailer without these papers. Fly spray is definitely very important. Um, show collars, baby wipes, uh, stand if you're gonna be milking or doing any extra clipping, and then just your basic brushes, hoof clippers if you need them um, to do some last minute trimming, um, little handheld clippers possibly to do kind of some of those touch-ups, food for both you and your goat, most shows do have food vendors available, but it's kind of nice just to be able to sit at your, at your pens or at your trailer and not have to get up and go somewhere to find food sometimes. And then water um, or a water filter. Um, so for me, when I go to a show, we always take an RV water filter that just connects right to most hydrants um, to help filter out some of the kind of the weird taste of the water because some of the goats may not prefer it. And you want to make sure that they, they have their gut full, um, that it, represents the animal well when they're when they're healthy and they're full. So making sure you have clean clothes. Um, so for the boar goats, you can kind of go with jeans and a nice polo or a button up shirt. For the dairy goat side of it, you wanna to try to have at least a white shirt, if not white bottoms as well. Especially if you're doing showmanship, you wanna be in full white. Um, chairs to sit in, buckets to feed feed or water. Shavings or straw, depending on what you prefer or what the show rules may dictate. Um, any lead ropes. So if you happen to have to take three or four animals to ringside, um, having a lead rope there to help hold some of those animals is helpful. And then especially on the dairy side, especially some of those little Nigerian dwarfs, um, having kind of a smaller cage to put those animals in because most of our pens, the gaps are wide enough between the bars that Inevitably, at almost every dairy goat show, someone will come up carrying a dairy Nigerian dwarf kid and say, who does this belong to? So just some way to kind of help contain the animals. And then now it's the day of the show. So what to kind of expect as you show up, if you show up the day of. Um, arrive according to times on the rules. So most rules will state you need to be there by such and such a time. So make sure you're there before that time so you have time to settle in, get registered, things like that. Um, most shows will have somebody look over your animals before they are offloaded from the trailer to make sure they're healthy. So just be cautious and just kind of be courteous to those people. Um, if being penned, find your pen before you start taking animals off the trailer, just because at that point you can bed the animals, put the saw or put bed the pens, you can put the sawdust or straw down and you don't have to spread it on top of your goats that are already in the pen. Make sure your animals have food and water. Um, and so once this is done, or as somebody else that you've come with is doing that, you can go to the check-in table. Um, there they will double check to make sure everything is correct on the paperwork that they receive versus what you have. Um, and then pay attention throughout the day for class announcements. Um, so make sure you have your animals ready to go. Um, so for me, um, since the dairy goats show pretty much by breed, I make sure I'm getting my animals ready the breed before I have to show, so. And then last thing, make sure your animals are cleaned off, sawdust, manure, dirt spots before you enter the ring. Again, you wanna try to present the best animal possible, so make sure they're clean. Most of our rings will walk in a clockwise pattern. So just pay attention to directions from the judge or the ring steward as to which direction you should really be going. 
Um, be courteous to others around your pen space. So don't have things spread all over the aisle or all around your trailer. Just try, try to keep things picked up, um, especially when you get towards the end of the day. It's a lot easier to be able to load and go if you have things kind of neat and orderly close to your pen than having to track stuff down all over. Um, I always try to make sure I close my pen gates when I leave because as I'm walking out, if I have to close somebody else's gates as I'm trying to lead three or four goats, it just kind of becomes a hazard. So just close your pen gates just to be courteous to others. And if you do have questions for the judge, try to wait until the end of the day after they're done judging. Now they may not remember your animal specifically because depending on the show, they may be looking at two to 500 animals. Um, but you can say, okay, this is an animal I had a question on. This is how you place them. Can you explain further? So finally, in summary, if you have questions, ask. Um, most people are willing to help answer them and help you through your first shows. Um, at least that's our, my experience on the dairy goat side of it. Um, it's people are willing to help. You just need to be, be there to ask. Um, and so Robbie had posted a couple of shows that are coming up on June 4th over in Elkhart County. Um, both a boar goat show and a dairy goat show are going on that weekend. Um, there are a lot of different shows that you can find on different um, Indiana, um, Indiana goat pages that they advertise on there. For dairy goats, you can go to the American Dairy Goat Association webpage and they have a list of their, all their sanctioned shows on there. Um, so it's just a fun time. If you're still not sure and you're not quite ready to take your animals there, go to one of the shows and just see how it goes. Um, ask questions of people. Maybe not as they're trying to go in the ring, but if they're just sitting around their pens, just ask them questions throughout the day. So, so Rabbi and I wish you all happy showing. And with that, we'll answer any questions you might have.